My name is Bill Maurer and I direct the Institute for Money, Technology and Financial Inclusion at the University of California, Irvine. Here in the United States, we're only just beginning to hear about mobile payments and mobile money transfer using um, the cell phone. Just this past summer, Swear and Starbucks announced a partnership whereby you'll be able soon to use your cell phone to make a purchase at um, any Starbucks in the country. You would just walk into the store, you would have already signed up for the Square service with your phone, the Starbucks teller would know that you had entered the store, they'd receive a notification on their screen that you were there. You'd place your order, they'd probably greet you by name because the name would pop up on their computer screen, and um, they'd give you your coffee and a payment would take place without you ever having removed your phone from your pocket. Here at the Institute, we are studying some of the implications of these new mobile phone-enabled technologies for payment and what the mobile is doing to money. In places like Kenya, um, in the developing world where there often isn't a built-out infrastructure for electronic payments, the mobile network is being used as a financial network. Here in the U.S., of course, we have a number of payment options and most of them work just fine. We can swipe our credit cards or our debit cards, we can use gift cards or loyalty cards at the point of sale, and of course a lot of people still use cash. So why, in a context like the U.S., where things pretty much work well at the point of sale, are we seeing some, so much interest um, in mobile money? If I'm carrying around this very powerful tiny computer with me all the time, my mobile phone, and it knows where I'm going, it knows what I'm doing, it knows who I'm talking to and who I'm texting, it knows what stores I'm entering because of the geolocation s s services that are in the phone. If I now start adding payment to what I'm doing with my phone, suddenly we're opening a whole trove of transactional data that also has all of my prior preferences, my prior shopping habits, my prior emotions. That is seen really as a gold mine for marketing companies that are eager to develop new kinds of loyalty programs or targeted ads. So where in the developing world we're seeing mobile money really as a means of upliftment for the poor, here in the U.S. I think we're going to start to see mobile money as another advertising channel, as a new way to provide marketing content to us through our phones while we're using some of these new services.